Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 912. a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies can be a tool for building personal long-term wealth. That's the title of this article on CNBC.com by Carmen Reinecke. And I thought it was right up our alley because I love to talk about cryptocurrencies and how they are such a great addition to a portfolio. Just 3 to 5% can make a world of difference and can create a nice nest egg for you in addition to your retirement funds. So let's take a look and see what this article says. Even though it's a highly volatile asset, cryptocurrency can help investors build wealth, especially if they invest in digital coins over the long term. It's a portfolio play that's gained traction in recent months and is catching up to stock trading as something that Americans are looking at for growing wealth. Some 13% of Americans have purchased or traded cryptocurrencies in the past year, according to a recent survey by NORC at the University of Chicago. In the same time period, 24% traded stocks, the study found. So I just want to pause there and say, okay, they're pointing out less than half of people who traded stocks in the past year have invested in cryptocurrencies. So as I always say, we are very early in this game and that's where we want to be. We want to be invested before the big waves of money start to come in. And it seems like every day we're hearing about new institutions. Just this weekend, there was an article about the country of Germany approving cryptocurrencies. And that was starting today. German institutional funds will be able to hold up to 20% of their assets in cryptocurrencies. And these institutional funds that were approved manage about $2.1 trillion worth of assets. The article goes on to say, Bitcoin has whipsawed lately, showcasing the volatile nature of many digital coins. On Friday, the asset fell to about $32,000 per coin, but rebounded to about $40,000 on Monday, the highest price it's hit since June. On Tuesday, the cryptocurrency slumped again, trading down 5% to $37,000. That's a big drop from the all-time high of about $63,000 hit in mid-April. Still, Bitcoin is up roughly 30% year-to-date. It does have a place, especially for those that are younger, said Tyrone Ross, CEO of OnRamp Invest, a provider of crypto asset management technology for financial advisors. To be sure, investing in cryptocurrencies should be second to having a solid financial plan that includes emergency savings and solid retirement planning, according to Ross. Have a financial plan first and figure out where crypto fits into that, said Ross. If you don't have a plan, what are you doing? Once that's in place, however, it can make sense for investors to consider crypto as a key part of their long-term portfolio. Due to the volatile nature of cryptocurrency, financial experts generally recommend it for tech-savvy investors who are dedicated to learning about the asset and have a lot of time to ride the ups and downs. Then, some of the same rules of investing in the stock market apply, namely, don't make emotional decisions or sell on a downswing. This might be even more difficult or take more discipline for cryptocurrency investors. Ross suggests not checking the price often, and certainly not every day. If you pay attention to that, you'll have tremendous stomach acid and you'll gray very quickly, he said. I just want to pause there and say, well, we all know that cryptocurrencies are very volatile. And in this article, they chose to focus on Bitcoin, which if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know that's not something I'm invested in or recommend investing in because I believe there are cryptocurrencies that have better technology than Bitcoin. 
They take less energy to use. They are faster, more efficient, and they're not just a store of value. They actually have some use cases. That means they have utility. There's things you use them for, like cross-country payments and foreign exchange and being a bridge asset to other assets. There's all kinds of different cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin was just the first, but I believe it's been improved upon and there's much better investments out there. But nonetheless, Bitcoin is still the largest cryptocurrency and as such, it is the big whale that every other cryptocurrency follows. So when Bitcoin goes up, the whole altcoin market or all the rest of the cryptos tend to go up. When Bitcoin goes down, all of the coins tend to go down, even though there's over 7,000 different cryptocurrencies. It's kind of like a rising tide lifts all boats and the asset class moves together. But while this article just likes to point out the volatility of Bitcoin, all cryptocurrencies are very volatile. But it's not just the downside, they're volatile on the upside. And that's why they get hundreds to thousands of percent compounded over time because they are young companies, they're more emerging companies, and therefore you're getting much higher growth rates than you're used to getting in the stock market. So some of these compounding returns that we're getting are three digits or four digits or five digits. It's incredible the numbers that are coming in in these cryptocurrencies. And that's something that I've been writing about in my book that I'm working on right now. The article goes on to say, financial experts generally recommend only putting into cryptocurrencies an amount of money that you can safely lose. In other words, it shouldn't be all of your nest egg. Typically, having 5% of your portfolio in a high-risk asset such as Bitcoin or other coins is a safe rule of thumb. For some investors, however, it may make sense to put even more into crypto. I would say 5 to 15% of digital assets in general, and that is up from 2 to 5%. Alex Mashinsky, co-founder and CEO of Celsius, a cryptocurrency lender that pays high yields and supplies loans using crypto as collateral. Higher allocations are generally for younger investors who really believe in the technology behind cryptocurrency, think it will be more widely adopted in the future, and have time to wait. If you are 69 and you're retiring next year and you're going to need this money, obviously this is not a good idea, said Mashinsky. But if you're in your 20s and you're projecting 20 or 30 years forward, then you should have a bigger allocation. So I wanna pause there and say I slightly disagree with that. I understand the point he's trying to make, which is an older person doesn't wanna take on more risk with a big part of their portfolio, but we're not talking about a big part. We're talking about a small part, three to 5%. And we also, aren't talking about a 20 or 30 year time horizon here. I think a five year time horizon is a very reasonable time horizon for cryptocurrency. When you look what cryptocurrencies have done over the last five years, and you see the compounding numbers that they've had in the triple digits and beyond, I think a five year time horizon is very reasonable. And five years from now in 2026, we're gonna be so much further along in cryptocurrencies. We're gonna look back on these days as very rudimentary and very basic in terms of what cryptocurrencies could do. The article goes on to say, experts also recommend that investors buy crypto using strategies similar to those used for stocks, such as dollar cost averaging, basically putting in small amounts of money consistently instead of buying all at one time. This helps combat some of the price volatility. It's not about, I'm going to make 10 times my money, I'm going to be rich, said Mashinsky. Instead, investing in cryptocurrencies should be viewed as another path towards financial independence that can help people beat inflation over time. So I wanna pause there and say, I'm all for dollar cost averaging, and that's how you take advantage of the volatility with cryptocurrency. You make it your friend, you buy the dips, you use those times to work in your favor and buy low. And believe me, with the volatility in the market, it gives you plenty of opportunities to do that. So you can average in over time, and that's really a smart way to go. The article goes on to say, another benefit of cryptocurrency is that it has wider appeal to investors who have traditionally had trouble building long-term wealth, including people of color, women, and those with lower incomes. 
women make up more than 40% of cryptocurrency traders, as opposed to 38% of stock traders, the NORC survey found. The people of color and those with lower incomes surveyed by NORC were also more likely to invest in cryptocurrency than stocks. People of color make up 44% of crypto traders, compared to 35% that hold stocks. And those making less than $60,000 annually make up 35% of cryptocurrency traders, while only 27% of those investing in stocks had similar annual incomes. I want to pause there because that's a little bit misleading. How they're framing this in the article almost makes it sound like people that make less money are buying cryptocurrency. That's not exactly what's going on. What's going on is younger people who make less money are buying cryptocurrency. So it tends to be skewed more toward the youth and that's why there's an income disparity. But it's not mentioning that we have also the top 1% wealthiest people investing like mad in cryptocurrency. We have institutions, endowments, high net worth individuals, clients of private wealth, and family offices all investing in cryptocurrencies en masse. So hedge funds are getting in who represent the top 1%. We have JP Morgan approving it for the wealthiest clients. We have other investing houses that represent wealthy investors getting their wealthiest in. The top 1% are the ones that are piling in right now. So that's a very misleading statement that they've made about low income people investing in cryptocurrency. It tends to be younger people and it tends to be very wealthy, top 1% wealthiest people that are investing in cryptocurrency. The article goes on to say, in addition, the average age of crypto traders was 38 compared to 47 for those holding stocks. I think there's a lot of potentially perceived barriers to traditional retail stock investing that have made some of these historically underrepresented groups less likely to invest, said Angela Fontes, vice president in the Economics, Justice and Society Department at NORC at the University of Chicago. On the flip side, the growing accessibility of cryptocurrency has appealed to those same groups, she said. End of article. Well, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I think cryptocurrency is what can bridge the wealth gap because cryptocurrencies are a separate asset class. They are different from stocks. They don't move in tandem with stocks. They move independent of stocks. Therefore, they reduce the risk of your overall portfolio. They're a perfect complement to a stock portfolio and they are providing increasingly incredible returns. And that's because you're able to invest almost as if you were a venture capitalist at an earlier stage of the investment. Usually you have to wait until a company becomes worth a billion dollars or so and goes on the stock exchange in an initial public offering. Look at the IPO we had last week with Robinhood. They were valued at $32 billion the day they did their IPO. So you're investing at a much later stage when you buy stock in the stock market. When you're buying cryptocurrency, you're able to get in at the beginning on the ground floor just about, and you're able to invest almost as a venture capitalist, which means you're able to get higher returns of compounding that normally only the wealthiest of investors who are accredited investors that have more than a million dollars of investable assets to invest can be investing in. So this is a whole new paradigm for investors to be able to put, again, a small portion, three to 5% of your portfolio into something that yes is volatile, but also is volatile on the upside and has tremendous performance that is smoking the stock market performance. That's why the top 1% are piling into cryptocurrency. They see those performance numbers and they want to compound at those rates. But we're there first and that's the key is to get in early, get in before the crowd, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do. 
If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them. And all of my podcasts are available on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. Only a small number are on the Apple Podcasts app. I have many more over on my website and a search box there that you can search your favorite keywords and topics that you want to know more about and find what it is that you're looking for. So check that out at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.